I think it's come time to address the elephant in the room. So far, we've just celebrated the glory of my five grand BMW 760Li in its effortless power, mad interior gadgets, and incredible value for money. However, I think we all know that my BMW 760Li is a little bit like Margot Robbie. She's a real looker on the outside, seems like a really nice person on the inside too, but I think we really know that underneath it all, she's gonna be super high maintenance, end up costing you a small fortune, and just be an all round to keep happy. So then today I've brought my 760Li to RBM Hampshire, a BMW and Mini Specialist, where I've been religiously bringing my cars for the best part of a year or so now. Ross and the team here always seem pretty happy to take a look at my cars for me. So I'm gonna be very interested to see what they think of this one. So everyone, let me introduce you here to Ross at RBM. Happy New Year, Ross. I haven't seen you. Happy this New Year, year to you, Joel. How's it going? Yeah, good, thank you. Good. Well, this is my um, 760 Li. Yep. Um, which I've been wanting to bring bring to you since since I got it because obviously these things are notorious for reliability problems. But I sort of think that I might have found a little peach. I, I don't know. I want you to have a look at it, really. Um, the only things I've noticed are it's losing a bit of coolant quite a lot of coolant actually bit of a misfire potentially and it's sort of quite wet in the back so i think there's a leak somewhere okay so um yeah i was hoping you could sort of take a look yeah no worries at all we'll get it fixed on the ram get it up do a visual health check on it cool um and then we'll plug it on the diagnostics and see see what full codes we've got nice let's do it hopefully there's uh, not too much of a long list by the end of today yeah fingers crossed <laughs> <laughs> Right, Ross, I'm eager to hear what you guys have found. I've seen you all sort of looking underneath the car for a little while now. Tell me how bad it is. <laughs> it's not bad, actually. Seriously? Yeah, I, yeah I'd say mechanically, it's, it's not a bad example. Wow. So first thing is, we've got a noise. Oh. So I don't know if you can hear that, Joel. Yeah, I can hear that, it's horrible. Yeah, so it sounds like there is actually a stone stuck behind the back plate. Okay. Um, so what we'd do with that is we'd strip the, the brake disc off and remove a stone. I mean, they're easy to get caught behind these, these backing guards. Yeah, yeah. So that's nothing too major, but that's okay. just more of a, an annoyance an rather annoyance. than anything else. Yeah. Um, another thing we've got are these, um, these brake hoses. They're rubber flexi hoses here. They're quite prone to, um, to perish. Obviously, they're, they're only rubber, so over time they perish. Yeah. And if you get a close up here, Joel, you can see they're just starting to crack right at the bottom here. Okay, so are they something that would need replacing pretty soon, do you think? Um, there'd be an MOT advisory, I'd say. Okay. So I'd say maybe safety related, you'd probably want to get those yeah. replaced sooner than later. Yeah. Um, but yeah, nothing too major there. I mean, labor wise and parts wise, you know, it's nothing too concerning really. Um, another thing is, is there is a, this, a suspension arm at the top here. Um, you've got a little dust cover on this suspension arm for the ball joint. Okay. This dust cover is actually split, so it's actually, you know, dirt and, and you know, grease and everything will be coming out of this. Right. Um, so ideally, you'd like to get this arm changed at some point, because um, it's just got a very slight bit of play in there when you move the wheel. Okay. So obviously that'll affect the handling and the ride of the vehicle. So that's the back end. So not too bad, nothing too major there really. Okay. Um, if we take a, a, a closer look at the front end, gearbox is good, it's dry. That's one of the common areas on this engine, um, on this vehicle. Um, there's a, a gasket that runs along the bottom of the sump, um, which is prone to leak. So that looks like that's been done. Brilliant. Um, the other thing that's been done are these um, front suspension arms. Um, they call them reaction arms and they've got a bush here and a ball joint at the other end. Because this is such a heavy vehicle, these bushes at the front do take quite, um, quite a hammering. So it looks like someone at some point has replaced both of these arms complete. Okay. So that's a good sign. That's going to save you some money. The only other thing to, to think about on this front end is there's a slight oil leak, as you can see here at the bottom. Yeah. Um, 
when we were doing our inspection from the top, we noticed that, that one of the uh, rocket cover gaskets was slightly weeping. So this is obviously tracking down the side of the engine. And obviously you can see here, it's gonna be dripping on your drive soon. So we might need to, to investigate that a little bit further. Sure. What we'll probably do is we'll probably clean that off for now, just to make sure that's definitely where it's gonna come from and then get it back in another time and just recheck to see okay. if that's definitely where the leak's coming from. Are you able to ascertain anything in terms of the coolant leak? Um, um, just from a visual inspection, or would you have to really, really take Not really, I mean, some... it's actually quite tight, the engine, to the, to the front of the There's car. There's tons of pipes and stuff so in there, isn't it's, there? Yeah, it's quite hard. So what we'd have to do is we'd have to take some of the engine covers off and take this under tray here off. Okay. And maybe have a further inspection. Okay. Um, I know you said that the customer you thought maybe had done the radiator. Yes, previously. yes. So hopefully that's looking pretty good. So hopefully it's maybe just um, a coolant pipe. That's or, starting... Yeah, probably one of the hundred million pipes that... <laughs> yeah, just starting to weep maybe. So um, yeah, we'll, we'll pull this off now and we'll have, a, we'll have a, a quick look and see if we can see anything. Fantastic, thank All you. Right. I mean, you can see a few of these oil leaks, it's nothing, nothing too major really. You know, as much as your followers are gonna hate you actually buying a good example, but <laughs> yeah, it doesn't look too bad under there, so I'd say your cooler nick's probably from higher up. Right, so everything was all pretty, actually, pretty good with the underside of the car. Yeah, bit, su surprisingly good. Yeah, considering I mean, your concerns. I'm a little bit more worried about when you plug it in. Yeah. <laughs> what you're going to find? Because I know, I mean, uh, James, the guy I bought it off previously, he said there was a bit of a misfire going on. I have noticed a little bit of vibration. Yeah. So, um, yeah, kind of intrigued to see what what error codes it's it's thrown up. Yeah, so what we've done is we've plugged it into our BMW system, the yeah. same system that the main dealer uses. Okay. Um, and what we've actually found is it's got a few misfire faults, so your concerns were correct. Okay. So what we've got is we've got cylinders 7, 9 and 10. It's saying there's an issue there with the misfire. Right. So this can be down to possibly a spark plug, um, ign ignition coil, or alternatively a fuel injector. We've worked on these cars in the past where the fuel injectors are quite common to go down on this engine. Okay. So that's my gut, gut reaction is, you know, if it's all been serviced properly and it's had the spark plugs done on time, then it's going to be likely a fuel injector issue. And they're quite a little bit spenny, aren't they? They are, they can be, yeah. I mean, that'd be like a BMW only part. So yeah. um, it's quite a specialist part. So yeah, it's, it, we would order it direct from them. Okay. Um, the other fault that was in there in the diagnostics is, um, so on the dash, you're getting a PDC failure warning light. So yes, park, I've, I've seen that. Park yeah. dis distance control. Yes. So you've actually got a fault stored in there for the front center right sensor. So you've okay. got four on the front, four on the back. So it's saying front right in the center. There's an issue with that sensor. Okay. So what we found in the past, it can be the sensor itself or it can, if it's had maybe a slight knock in the past, um, maybe the wiring's, you know, hasn't got the best contact. So what we'd have to do is pop the sensor out, just you know, check the wiring with a multimeter just to make sure that was okay. And then if that's okay, then we're probably looking at a new sensor. Okay. So. Is that it? That's it. Seriously? Yeah. So would you, because I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd like to get everything put right, so it's as, yeah. as good as it can be. Would you possibly be able to put me a quote together? Yeah. And we can just yeah, have a look then can. at how yeah. much this is all going to cost me to get right. But yeah. it's probably not going to be more than the value of the car, put it that way. No, I'd, Which is... I'd say, yeah, I'd say you've done okay out of this car. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> so everyone, while Ross puts together a quote for all of those bits we've just spoken about, this is actually one massive bonus of this car. I can just sit in the back and chill while I wait. Uh, I might actually put the ignition on in a second and uh, watch some TV depending on how long we're going to be, but I'll just move the front seat out of the way as much as it will go. Oh, I need to switch the ignition on first. Um, but yeah, what a great little perk of having this car. I've got the blinds up for my privacy uh, while the guys in there look at a quote for me and uh, sitting very comfortably while I wait. So to be honest guys, it seems like this might be okay. 
Um, I'm just waiting for Ross to put the quote together and then we'll know exactly how... Oh, speak of the devil. <laughs> Hello, Ross. Hello. Uh, I see you've got a piece of paper in your hand. I have indeed. So is that everything we spoke about then? This is your quote for your 760i. How much are we talking? Uh, parts labour in VAT comes to £1,519.86. That's actually amazing. I mean, considering, so I paid five grand for the car. Yep. And so all of the comments on that first video were saying, well, just wait until you've got to have something done and then you're going to be spending that again. So that is actually really uh, impressive. And that's to rectify everything. basically everything, yes. Okay. So what have we got on there? So first off, we've got um, a coolant expansion cap because okay. you're suffering a little bit of coolant loss. Um, okay. There was um, some staining around the top of the expansion cap. Um, so we're recommending a new cap onto that tank. Okay, to see if that might be the yeah, issue Yeah, I mean, we first. couldn't see any other leaks at all, you know, with the, the rest of the cooling system. So I'd say let's start with the cap. Sure. It's a cheap fix, start with that. Yeah. Um, they're known to leak sometimes, so okay. I'd say start with that. I seem sensible. Yep, so we've got that. Um, the next we've got the, the brake flexi hoses, the rubber hoses at the back. That yes. That we're talking about that were perished. How much is that? Uh, £66.30 okay. pence plus the VAT. Okay. So not, 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 not a huge amount of money really. No. Um, and then it just means the brake system's nice and safe, then no, you know, no chance of the hoses splitting and leaking yeah. fluid. Yeah. Next up, we've got um, the stone that's caught behind the back plate on this wheel here. So to strip that down, we're looking at half an hour's work to get the stone out. Next up, you've got your PDC sensor on the front. So yes. your parking uh, warning light's coming on. So we've got a new sensor priced up to go on there. Okay. Um, that's actually quite expensive from BMW because it comes painted. Right, and they, yeah. So, so it comes painted from the factory, so that's actually quite an expensive item okay. to, to replace. Also, you've got a suspension arm on this uh, near side rear that we talked about. Yes. So that's, um, that's replacing the arm because you've got a split in one of the rubbers on the actual suspension arm itself. So cost-wise for that is £142 plus the VAT. Okay, okay, not too bad. So not too bad, about half, half an hour's work and then the rest of it's in the part itself. And then the last one is the fuel injectors. This is going to be the more expensive. Yes, of the so long, you've got it? fuel injectors 7, 9 and 10. Cost-wise to do the three in fuel injectors is £774 plus the VAT. And does this have 12 of them? Yes. So if it had been all of them misfiring, we'd be looking at, what, about three grand just to do Quite the Quite expensive, injectors. yeah. But so to, to do one, luckily they're all on one bank, so you don't need to, you don't need to strip down both boat. sides. It's just, yeah, the, this side here. So it could honestly be a hell of a lot worse. This yeah. is. Yeah. Uh, so I'd say at this point in time, that's that's not a bad result. I guess we'll chat dates now, getting this yeah. stuff uh, we'll, we'll sorted, and then maybe we'll, we'll revisit visit it later on in a, another episode. Yeah, but, definitely. Uh, thanks so much, Ross, and uh, thanks guys for watching. We'll see you very very soon.